Hi everyone. I'm going to do uh, the same that I did last week and just uh, say hello initially, but then pause for a few minutes uh, just so that I know uh, that some more of you are able to log on and uh, and link in because I know it takes a few seconds for it to come up live on some people's pages. So I will carry on talking in two seconds, but in the meantime. So um, welcome to those of you who have never been into uh, one of the live uh, Learn with Lorna sessions. Welcome back to those of you who've been in the earlier ones with us. Um, a reminder, if you haven't um, been on any of these before, just to tell you a little bit about me and what I do, um, and then about the subjects we've already covered. Uh, so my name is Lorna, as the title kind of gives away. Uh, my name is Lorna, and I'm the Community Engagement Officer at the Highland Archive Service. And as I've said previously, my job involves anything really that connects people to the co collections that we look after. We're really, really lucky that we look after all sorts of different collections of uh, family papers, estate papers, business records, all sorts of things in our four archive centres across the Highlands. And uh, my job is one of the best because I get to share the collections with um, the public and all sorts of groups and things. So the previous sessions that we've already done, if you haven't seen them, um, I did a kind of quick tour of the building in Inverness, the Highland Archive Centre, um, and also uh, did a session on um, diaries, uh, encouraging people to keep diaries, and then one on letters and postcards to encourage people to write to people who might be feeling a bit isolated at the moment. Um, and then last week we did a session on how you find out a bit more about your own local area. So if you want to look at, back at any of those, um, I know there are some new school groups who are um, kind of uh, tying into this now. So if you want to look back at those, they are all available on our Facebook page. And also they're all available now on the High Life Highland YouTube channel. So you can have a wee look at them there anytime you want to. So today's subject is family history. We're really lucky in the Highland Archive Service, we've got a dedicated family historian. And I will put my hand up right now and say that is not me. Um, but uh, we have a family historian. And a lot of what we do, all of us who work in the Archive Service, is uh, connecting people to their family. And so one of the things I thought I would start by saying, any of you who have watched previously will know that I spend my morning rummaging around my house looking for crops to hold you as I can't hold anything from our own collections at work at the moment. Um, and so I had a wee look around to see what I could find to show you. The first thing I thought I would point out is that we're surrounded by things to do with our family history all the time, whether you realise it or not. So you've probably got, you know, an ornament that belonged to your gran or a table that came out of your dad's shed or all sorts of different things. So as you can see on my table here, and if those of you who have tuned in before will know I have not staged this, this is the chaos I normally live in. Um, all sorts of things connected to family history, just when you look around. This um, little thing is um, a stamp embossed crest for the freemen of the City of London. And that's because a lot of my ancestors were freemen of the City of London. And my dad bought that because it was important to him to remember that part of his family history. This connects me to family that I have currently living in New Zealand. This box here contains some letters between my mum and my dad. So we have things around us all the time that remind us of our family history. Any of you who have met me in real life and have been into my office uh, at work will know that I have behind my desk a huge family tree. And this is a draft of it here, just to show you the idea of the scale of it. Anyone who's interested in their family history will know it's very easy to uh, become very obsessed with it and find out lots of things. So, like I say, whether you're aware of it or not, you will have things around you that you keep because they remind you of someone in your past or someone in your present family. Um, people start their family trees for loads of different reasons. Sometimes people um, are just interested in finding out who went before them and where who they are and where they came from. Um, sometimes you can find someone in your past who had a really interesting job, and that's exciting for people to find. Um, sometimes it's because they've got a really happy, vague memory of a grandparent or something, and they just want to know more about what their life was like. 
sometimes it's a little bit sadder than that you know sometimes people come into us because they've got an illness and they want to know did people in their family before have that illness or they want to know who they are maybe someone in their family has been adopted and they just want to know a little bit more information about that um so there's all sorts of reasons that people come to us to find out about their family history um so how do we do it well, as I say, we're lucky that we've got a family historian. And at the end of this, I'll, I'll put a comment in with her email address in case any of you want to, to chat with her about getting your family tree done. Um, but it's a good thing that, that you could do when you're at home. A lot of us obviously are stuck in at the moment. Um, and it's a really good hobby. So what I'm going to do is talk you through some of the things that we do to create family trees. There are two ways to go about it as well. You can either start to create a full family tree with lots and lots of information in it. Or another option is to find one person in your family that you're really interested in and try and find as much out about them as you can. So I'll talk a little bit about both of those things. I'll also talk about what resources we've got up on our website for you. Um, we've picked some documents that relate to this subject and also some activities for you to do as well. I'm aware that both adults and children might be watching, so you could take this as whatever level you uh, is appropriate. Um, so, as I say, the first thing to do uh, if you're wanting to create a family tree, we always say to everybody, start with what you know. So, although everyone wants to get back to two, three hundred years ago, the best thing you can do is start with what you know now, because that's the thing that you have the most reliable evidence for. So, on our website, uh, on the resources page, we've put up for you a family tree template, and that's the thing that our family historian uses when she's just starting out with somebody to create their family tree. So um, you put in your own name, first of all, and then you move up the level. So what do you know about your mum? What do you know about your dad? What were the date? Do you know when they were born? Do you know um, what their middle names are? Things like that. And then the next level up, you can do your grandparents. So you'll have four people at that level. And then again, work back through the generations. So that template's up there for you to have a look at it. And like I say, start with yourself and then ask people. So first, first lesson is start with what you know. Second lesson is ask, ask, ask people. Because you, it might be a piece of information that you don't know or you, you don't know uh, how to find it out. But maybe your mum knows, maybe your granddad knows, then maybe an auntie or uncle. Someone might be able to, to give you that piece of information. So always ask as many family members as you can. And this is another good way that while everyone's stuck in and isolated, why not write to a family member and ask them some questions? And again, I've put up on the website for you um, some uh, a simple questionnaire that you could ask your mum, your granddad, anybody at all about their what's their full name, where did they go to school, that sort of thing. Um, a lot of what we do, I say we, I mean Anne, who's our family historian, a lot of what she does um, base, is based around birth, marriage and death records. So in very, very simple terms, the way you can find out about a person is when they were born, if and when they got married, and when they died. Because those are the things really, the, the birth and death are the things that are guaranteed in life. And that everybody will have at least that as a record. So in Scotland, it was in 1855 that we started recording births, marriages and deaths. Now they do exist from before that, but it was in 1855 that it became a legal requirement to record birth, marriage and death. And so the records after that contain a lot more uh, kind of structured information. So for instance, this is one, now I'm afraid in a way it's a bad example because it's an English one and not a Scottish one, um, but the, the general uh, gist of information is, is the same. Um, and this is a marriage certificate of my um, great, great grandparents. So you can see here, uh, William Edwards and Emma Buxton. And this is their marriage certificate from the 3rd of September, 1871. So certificates will give you a lot of information. They give you um, names. They give you whether the person was married before or not. They give you occupations and places of living. And I'll come back to that in a second. So a birth certificate um, will give you uh, information, particularly in Scotland, the ones in Scotland have more information than the ones in England do. Um, a birth certificate will give you the person's name, 
when they were born, where they were born, and what their parents' names were, and where their parents were, when and where their parents were married. So a lot of information, and that you can start to fill in that family tree template uh, because you have the person's name who was born, and then the parents' information, which will take you back a generation to fill in that form with some more things on there. So birth, marriage, and death records are really, really important. Now, the best place for Scottish records to get those is on a website called Scotland's People. So we do use other websites, things like Ancestry and Find My Past and, and other uh, websites. But from a Scottish point of view, Scotland's People is the best website to access because that is all the official records um, for birth, marriages and death for Scotland are held on that website. In normal times, when our buildings are open, <laughs> Um, in the Highland Archive Centre in Inverness, we have computers that link straight into that network, so you can look at all sorts of things on there. But in the meantime, you can have a look at Scotland's People website um, and you'll get some information on there. One thing just to point out, and this is the other reason that we say start with what you know. There are what's called closure periods on some records. So to protect people's personal identity, because obviously a, a birth certificate has a lot of information on it about you, about you or about the person who's born. Um, so when you go onto that website, you won't be able to see any death, any births in the last hundred years. It will be before that. So that's why you need to spend as much time as you can asking questions, trying to find out as much information as you can before you move back into that uh, older generations. So if you want to, when we come off this, have a look at Scotland's People website, they'll explain a lot more about birth certificates, marriage certificates and death certificates and what can be found on those. Another really good resource if you're tracing your family history are um, census records. So census records started in a kind of uniform fashion in 1841. And for anyone who doesn't know what a census is, the census was taken every 10 years and what it involved, uh, historically certainly, was somebody going around each house, finding out who was there that night and writing their name, their address. Um, the information depends for each one, but usually you'll get some information about what they did for a job and all the people who lived in a household. So that's a really good and really useful piece of um, information you can use to research. It's also really good if you just want to find out the history of your house. You can find out who lived there 100 years ago. So, for example, this one, it looks very difficult to read and it does take a little bit of practice. Um, this one is, again, one of my family members. And this, I don't know if you can see there. Ironically, it's sunny today and you can't see. Um, it's a highlighted column here. And this is my family members here living in one house uh, together. And it lists Edward Caloran and his wife, Mary, and then their children. It also tells you their ages. It tells you what their jobs are. So you can see here that Edward was a musician and it tells you where they were born. So this is another really useful piece of information. Again, when things are back to normal, you can come into any of our archive centres and have a look at census records. But in the meantime, again, you can find some of those on Scotland's People and that's a good place to start. Quite a lot of the time, people come into us and they just want to go as far back as they can. They want to get their family back to the 1700s or the 1600s or, um, you know, get, get their family back as far as they can. From my point of view, in my job, that's a little bit less important to me, although I can see why it's exciting. What's interesting to me is the fact that each of those people, whether they're 50 years ago or 350 years ago, has a story. And you, you wouldn't describe your life or your mum's life as, um, you know, a list of dates. Here's when they were born. Here's when they married. Here's when they died. That's it. Because you know that those people, they have jobs. They went to school. They um, found things funny. They found things annoying. They had hobbies, all sorts of things like that. And all of your ancestors were the same. So every person that you have on your family tree had probably had a job or if they didn't have a job that's another story as well um, but you know they will have had things they cared about they will have had things they didn't like all of those things people are not just lists of dates and that's something that's really important to me and in, in my job 
And so some of the other resources that we've put up on our website for you to have a look at, we've put some examples of different family trees up for you to look at. There's one from the McCall family in Loch Aber, there's one from uh, the Clan Gunn in Caithness, and there's one from the Sage family in Sutherland. So have a wee look at those um, trees and, and see what you think of those. But the other things we've put up to show you are the other places that you can get information and a little bit of a rounder, a more round story about somebody's life. So for instance, I'm going back to my bag of supplies. For instance, this photograph, a lot of my family for about a hundred years lived in one house in London, um, just around, uh, down the road from St Paul's Cathedral. And I found this postcard on eBay and it has um, the address in it, Love Lane in London. And then it has right on the top, G and W Edwards, carpet cleaners and chimney sweeps. And now that's the Edwards that I showed you a second ago on that marriage certificate. So when I saw it, that's an additional piece of information to me that just is a reminder of, of my family and what they did. So that photograph tells a little bit of the story of my family. Now you will probably have some photos in your family, a lot of people are not as lucky as I am. I have a lot of information which I've been given from uh, different family members. Um, so a lot of people won't have that much and I, I know that. But you probably will have something, even if it's a picture of your granny, a picture of your auntie. You know, those things tell part of your story. This book here, which I was left by my granddad, is full of photos of different family members and it shows costumes and it shows what they were wearing and what they did for a living and all sorts of things. So ask again, ask the question, ask your, your grandparents, your parents, do we have any old photos of the family that we can have a look at? Because as I said, you can create a family tree and find out as many people as you can. But the other thing that you can do um, is just find something about one or two different people and really research them and find out about their lives. And that really, I can hear Anne, our family historian, saying to me, that is the difference between genealogy and family history. So it's not just dates, it's what were people's lives like? What did they do for a living? What did they, um, what did they live like? What was the world that they lived in like? Um, I'm looking at my list of the many things I want to say to you. So in order to do that, um, to find out more about people's real lives. We've put up on our website some other documents. We've put up a school admission register from Sky, um, a pro-relief record, a valuation role, and that shows who lived in each house. All of those wider sources tell more, give you more information about what a person's life was like. We are really, really lucky uh, at the Highland Archive Centre in Inverness to have the records of Craig Denain, and um, what was then called the District Lunatic Asylum. And those are great resources for people researching their family history and they find out that somebody had maybe been really poor or somebody had been in an asylum or somebody had been not well. And those things tell you much more about their life and what the conditions were like and you know, the situations that they were living in. So there's some of those up for you to have a wee look at as well. And maybe try and think about how many different resources you can think that there might be that you could find information in. The other thing I've put up on the website um, are some examples of stories that we have found for people in their family history. So as I say, we spend a lot of our working time um, helping people find out about their families. And so up on the website, we've put up two storyboards for you to have a look at. Three storyboards, but two that I'm going to talk about. Um, one is the stories of the Dunbar family. So this, um, these were a family who we discovered that on the 1881 census, um, as I say, they were taken every 10 years the census. So on the 1881 census, the Dunbar family were all living together um, in Argyle Street in Inverness. Nothing extraordinary about that. But when we went to look at the next one, the 1891 census, we realised that William Dunbar, who was the father, he was still there, but he only had one daughter with him. We didn't know where all the other children had gone. So we had to track back and try and find out why the children weren't all together. What we discovered was that in 1883, so two years after that first census that we'd looked at, 
William's wife, Grace, had died on the same day that their youngest son, Alexander, had been born. So that kind of illustrates what I'm saying about you can see it's just that's a statement of fact. There was a birth, there was a, a death. But behind that's all sorts of emotions. Can you imagine how William felt going to register his wife's death and his child's birth on the same day? That tells a story of its own. So we realise now that Grace had died um, and that Alexander had been born. So when we got to the 1891 census, and it was only William living there with Jane, his oldest daughter, and we thought, well, where are the other children? So just as a hunch, we thought, I wonder if they've gone into the poor relief system, which is where people would claim to, for help if they didn't have enough money to survive. And that is exactly what happened. So we found William applying for help from the poor relief system to uh, look after his children because he couldn't support them anymore because his wife had died. And we found them all going into the to the poor house. And it's a really sad entry because it says that they were all very dirty and very poor and they've been taken in uh, to this to the poor house. It does have a happier ending because we saw that some of the um, children came out and went back to live with their father, but some of them went and were boarded out and lived with uh, a family up in um, Abriachan. And so it does have it, it does have a, a good ending. Um, and we could see them as well in the school records, those children, we could see them going to school in a brief. And so it just confirmed what we thought we knew. So instead of just seeing those as, as um, simple dates of someone was born, someone died, we have suddenly got a round story. The father had uh, a problem with drinking too much alcohol. He couldn't look after the children because his wife had died. And so they were put into the poor house. And you, you suddenly build a much richer story um, than you would get if you just looked at the fact of birth, marriages and death. The other story that we've got up for you to read, um, as I say, I'm, I'm kind of glossing over that quite quickly, but the story is up there on the website for you to read right through. And the nice thing about that story was years later, somebody came into the Highland Archive Centre and said, I'm interested in this particular family. This is my own ancestors. And as I've said before, we're quite sad sometimes in our job because we go, oh, I know that person. Um, and so we knew all about that family. And that was exciting for us to find someone who was descended from them. Um, and had come from America, actually. Uh, the other story that I'll just quickly tell you about um, is uh, the story of Ambrose Salvo Salvona, the lion tamer. So this uh, was somebody that we came across in a, a slightly strange way. There was a song written about him, um, and the person who had written the song had said, I don't know where, I've got an ancestor who's a lion tamer in the Highlands, but I don't know where he's buried or um, more about him. And so um, our family historian tried to find out more about Ambrose, and she did. And she found out that he had come from a circus family, of course, because you don't just have a lion. Um, and he had travelled around the Highlands and around Scotland, all sorts of different places. He'd come over from Europe, travelled with his circus. Um, all his children were born in all sorts of different places around the country, so that was quite hard to, to track down. Um, but he had, uh, by the time he was in his late 80s, was living in Inverness. This is in about 1915. Um, was living in Inverness and had fallen on hard times, so he didn't have enough money to, to survive uh, anymore. And he'd gone into the poor house at the age of uh, 89, it's still uh, 87, I think, still listed as a lion tamer, which makes you think. Um, so he'd been in the poor house for a little while and then he had died. And what is a kind of lovely end to this story is that he had obviously had no money, but lots of people had got together to raise money for uh, a grave for him, a stone, a headstone for him, um, because he was part of the Salvation Army. And so they had uh, got together, raised money and paid for his headstone and had uh, organised a parade down through Inverness to Tom Nahurik Cemetery. And if on your daily exercise, those of you who are living in Inverness, obviously, if you're living in Australia, it's a bit harder. But if you're living in Inverness and you've got a daily walk, you could go and have a look for his grave in Tom Nahurik Cemetery. Um, but that's a really nice story that although he had fallen on hard times and didn't have a lot of money, so many people cared about him that, that they raised money to have him buried um, as, as well as they could. So all sorts of stories that you can find out in your family history. 
And again, we, we've met descendants of Ambrose Savona, and that was really special for us as well. Um, so that's some of the things that are up on the website for you to have a look at. Now, if you want to build a family tree, the template's there for you. If you want to pick someone in your family and um, write about them, do research about that person and put that up, then there's information there on how to do that as well. There's some questionnaires and um, there's all sorts of different things. When we come back in a few weeks to look at World War II, World War I, we'll talk about how most people have a descendant, uh, an ancestor who served in the war. So those people can be really interesting to find out about and do a little project on. I'm quite jealous that I'm not still at school because I used to love doing projects like this. So um, please, please do it and please enjoy it. You won't get all the information. I'll just say that now. We don't get all the information in our job. And sometimes that's the most frustrating thing for us. But we get, um, you will find information and there will be people in your family or uh, connected to you who know more um, and can help you uh, get started on that. So yeah, ask a lot of questions. Um, the last thing I wanted to touch on as a, as a kind of exercise that you could do or activity is to think, we've been spent a lot of time thinking back there, but if you think forwards, in the future, someone might be interested in your family history and someone might be interested in you. And given everything that I've just said, you don't want them to think, oh, you know, Lorna was born in this year and she got married in that year. You're more than that. So why don't you have a little bit of a think about um, what makes you unique and special? So there's a spider diagram that I've put up on the website for you. Have a, a, a go at that. Put your name in the middle and write all the things that make you you. And then maybe in the future, someone will um, someone will find that and, and know more about you and, and a little bit about your life and what you liked and what was important to you. I've put mine up there and it, I will admit it says I am not good at uh, tidying up after myself. That says it on there, as you could see. Um, so yeah, have a think about that as well. In the future, people will want to know about about you and about your life or why not write a letter to be opened in the future that's really fun and um, so you could do that as well as always there is a word search because i've made a word search for every subject we're doing um as i said at the beginning if any of you adults watching are interested in doing more on your family history and um, we'll put in the comments the um, email address of our family historian if you want to contact her um, the, she will be working uh, on and off while, while, while we're in this strange time of <laughs> buildings being closed, so she will be able to be in touch with you. Um, if you do take part in any of these projects, please do um, uh, tag us in them. Please do an HLH Learn with Lorna hashtag Facebook on, or Twitter. We'd love to see what you're doing. I know that some people have been making things, some people have been um, writing letters and writing diaries and things. So please do send this, them to us. It's, it's lovely for us to see them. Um, the last thing to say is next week we're looking at World War II records. We've got all sorts of records in our collections across our four archive centres to do with World War II. So we're going to look at that next week. And um, when I come off this video, I'm going to upload the film onto YouTube so you can see it again if you want to. Um, and also I'll be uploading all the uh, events to come onto our Facebook page today. So please do keep a look out for those. There's um, health and wellbeing records, Jacobites, World War I, Victorians, all sorts of different things. So please do keep a look out for them and join us again. But in the meantime, I hope that you've uh, enjoyed this. It's given you a, a tiny little insight into uh, family history. And please do contact us if we can help you with any of these things going forward. But I'll see you next Thursday. Take care of yourselves.